Okay, I've moved my uh, rhythmic sample over to a different section of uh, the song. Good morning, everyone, or wherever you are in the world. It's about 10 a.m. in Los Angeles. My name is Austin, and I'm a harpist, vocalist, and a producer. I'm here today to show you a couple different ways that I record my harp and then use those recordings to match my production style. Now, obviously, not everyone is going to have a string instrument handy, so we're going to work with some splice samples as well. However, if you used to play a string instrument, maybe you've abandoned it as you started to produce, I encourage you to break it back out. We can find so many different ways to manipulate those recordings. And today we're specifically gonna be using FX Collection 2 by Arturia. Okay, so right off the bat, so that we have a backdrop for working with our samples, I've just gone ahead and sequenced a little track. I used Astra by Splice to sequence this lead part. Just made some minor adjustments to a preset that the plugin comes with. I turned the cutoff down a little bit so it wasn't as bright. I then opened up Beatmaker by Splice. This is a new plugin that they offer as well. And just sequenced a very minimal beat using one of the kits that the Beatmaker comes with. Lastly, I've just sequenced in some chords so we have some harmonic support when we go to record our samples. And all of that together sounds like this. vibing out we're feeling it but I definitely want to add some more textures and some more interest so let's start with our harp samples boom okay a vibe so <laughs> what I'm doing here is recording two different types of samples a melodic sample as well as a more rhythmic based sample so we have some variation with the samples we're going to be manipulating I'm just recording these right into Ableton Okay, so we have our samples recorded. I've renamed this melodic sample harp melody and then this more rhythmic um, sample as harp rhythm. So now I'll just go through a couple steps that I take to prep the samples to be manipulated. So first and foremost, let's just grab the tail end of this. We don't want any of that, obviously, all that moving around. even take a little bit more off there. Okay, great. So you don't have to take out space in between samples. Um, however, I am in downtown Los Angeles, so there's a lot of traffic, there's a lot of outside noise. So I think we can probably take out a little bit of this and give a nice fade in between these two clips. Again, you don't need to do that with everything. Sometimes having that room noise, that atmosphere, gives a more humanistic feel to the recording. So don't feel like there's a truck right now. <laughs> don't feel like you need to um, remove the space in between uh, recordings uh, every single time. It's not always necessary. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing with this guy here. Just kind of shave him. It's maybe not the right terminology, but you get it. Let's see how this guy sounds. Okay, fades out nicely. That's sounding good. Now the second thing I am going to do is just go ahead and add some RX. I use the voice denoise. That works really well for just canceling out any of the background noise that I might have picked up when I recorded these samples. So, And then the next thing I would do is just grab some EQ. I just use this simple EQ8 from Ableton. And I'm gonna solo the melody. Just gonna see if there are any frequencies that I don't love. In fact, we can go ahead and cut down the uh, lower 
lower frequencies. We don't want to lose that uh, body, but I think that that's just enough to sort of keep what we need and get rid of anything that we don't. I'm also going to cut down the resonance on the harp right here. You can kind of see it's getting a little hairy, so let's just cut it down slightly. Maybe even a little bit of a high shelf. My computer is on fire. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to please, excuse me, freeze and flatten these. All right, so let's just go ahead and mute the harp rhythmic sample, and we're going to work primarily with the melodic sample here. So let's first see how it sounds with the track. Sounds great. And then we also have this beautiful Rev Intensity plugin from Arturia. I've turned up the dry wet all the way. Since we're running that through the return track, we really just want the uh, wet processing. I've turned the size up just a bit. And this is the Infinity um, preset that we're going to be using. So let's bump that up. That's on return track D. That sounds beautiful. I love it. Okay, so I think it might be fun to duplicate this sample and then just Command J to consolidate so that I can then edit this entire clip. And what I'm going to do is bump this clip up five semitones. Let's solo that and hear how that sounds. So that's gorgeous, but I actually want to process these sounds a little bit more. So let's go into our plugins. I'm going to search for chorus. Arturia has come out with two chorus effects with FX Collection 2. Uh, They're supposed to emulate their hardware counterparts. So this chorus is supposed to emulate the chorus from a Juno 6. I think it does a fantastic job. So here's the interface of the plugin. We've got three modes of um, operation on the left hand side, the three shades of orange. We have the first mode, the second mode, and then the manual mode. And then to the right of that, we have three faders, rate, depth, and phase. And then we have our mix knob, that, which we can just use to adjust how much of the chorus we want mixing in with our audio track. So let's go ahead and solo the one track that we have this chorus effect on. Okay, so this is option one. Now we're listening to option two. And I'm going to turn down the mix a little bit. Just kind of playing with the faders here, listening to how they affect the sound. I'm going to turn my rate up a little bit because it's giving me a little bit more of a wobble, which I enjoy. She's giving lushness, she's giving analog warmth. I'm really loving how this sounds, so let's move on to our rhythmic sample. So right off the bat, I have this Delay Eternity plugin from Arturia on my return track. I'm then going to search for Flanger. This is another new plugin from FX Collection 2. We're going to throw this on our rhythmic sample and you can see we've got three modulation sources, a couple presets here as well. I'm going to be using the default and just turning up the wet a bit. Okay, I've moved my uh, rhythmic sample over to a different section of uh, the song. hear the flanger effect on there.
And then I've also taken the tail end of the rhythmic sample and I've repeated it a couple times throughout um, these four bars. That's another trick I love to do. Sometimes I'll just be looping something and I'll catch the tail end of a sample and realize that I enjoy hearing just that tail end independent from the rest of the recording. So I'll cut that off and repeat it a couple times, trailing off almost like a call and response. All right, let's see how it sounds with the entire track. Okay, beautiful. So I'm gonna go ahead and freeze that. We're done with our harp samples here. I think they sound great. I know everyone's not gonna have a string instrument handy, you might not have a harp nearby. So let's play around with some splice samples. Okay, so I'm going to open a MIDI track and I'm going to grab Splice's new feature, Bridge. This is basically a software in which we connect our DAW with our Splice desktop app. We can preview samples in different keys and different BPMs. Just trying out a couple different string instruments here. There are so many great ones in the Splice sample library. This one in specific just really caught my ear. I love the syncopation, so I think let's work with this one. I'm going to copy the modified clip and then paste the modified sample that we modified using Bridge. Back to full screen. Command J to consolidate. And then I am going to go to return track D where we have that reverb intensity plugin. I'm just going to crank that up to give us some wetness and some uh, space. I've decided to play with the same trick again. We're going to duplicate that, but now we're going to reverse the sample. And here's how it sounds with the rest of the project. from me today. I hope that you learned something. I hope that you liked seeing these FX Collection 2 plugins in action. They're a great thing to have in your toolkit. Comment below if you want more videos and tutorials and uh, until next time. <laughs>